I am live. Live. Mwahaha. Okay. So let's post. We gotta post out notifications. <laughs> All right. So we're out. Posted. Okay. Um. <laughs> All righty. So Let's get going here. So, I have taken, I, I mean, I just, I just had a wild idea one day. And um, so, one of the things I would like to do uh, is I would re like to relive my childhood dream of programming on the family Windows 98 computer. Why I want to do this, I don't know. But, um... I really, really, when I was a kid, I really, really wanted to, to write code on the computer. I thought programs were the coolest thing in the world. I wanted to be a programmer. I, want, I liked games. I thought they were neat. Um, so this is kind of going to, we're, we're going to see what that experience would have been like. And I, I have a feeling it's not going to be good. So we're going to, we're going to give this a shot. I actually have a physical machine here and um running into a cap card so um oh, let's uh we need the uh the original oh keyboard here old beige beige keyboard um and then we're going to uh fire this guy up we'll see what happens <laughs> All righty. I do not have audio set up quite yet. Um, that'll be a later stream that will actually get audio out of the thing. And the, that glorious boot screen, the Windows 98 boot screen, it apparently displays at a resolution my cap card can't do. So we don't get to see that either. But once it boots into Windows, the resolution is right. We can see the screen then. Um, so one of the things about this, so I am planning on, um, First, we're going to uh, use Borland C++. I actually found a, uh, a version of it online, and we will see how that installs, and uh, we'll go from there. Should be coming up here soon. It's taking its time. Assuming it didn't die between the last time I, I brought it up. Let me go double check. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're in. All right, we're in. Look at this the best wallpaper in the world <laughs> um start where where anyone starts oh uh, I need my preview I need my 
my cap preview uh, window projector there we go whoa now I'm managing two mice and two keyboards so this is gonna be fun all right I did even so I got flash drives working so I can I can uh, drop things via flash drive onto this thing um, so next step so we've got we got to do the install of Borland so we need we should move this to the hard drive conceivably that's gonna be faster so uh, the all-important temp directory no Windows 98 system is valid without it uh, oh replace existing file sure okay apparently I hit it twice so this is off of the CD drive right now so <laughs> need a little more room here two mice two keyboards it's getting chaotic <laughs> three minutes remaining which in Microsoft time means about 15 minutes um, or, or 30 seconds one of the two so we'll see what happens here I'm I I half expect this copy to to just fail just cuz The other thing that I'm that sucks is I don't think we're going to get to see the blue screen um just cuz of the resolution it outputs at. I I bought a scaler, but the scaler doesn't actually output anything at those resolutions um so I I don't get MS-DOS, I don't get Scalar, or I don't get the um, boot screen or anything yet. I gotta figure all that out, but like I said, Windows works okay. So we'll see how this this goes, but if uh, the screen all of a sudden cuts to no signal, pretty sure we hit a blue screen. So let's tr we'll, we'll try not to sig fall in in here uh, we'll see how that goes <laughs> I expect many sag faults here in this process so we'll see <laughs> while it while it loads I'm gonna go get seven zip up whoa uh, Seven zip. Come on. It's it's chugging. Just copying the file. I remember this part of the experience waiting for files to copy <laughs> hmm. 10 seconds it's the last 90% gonna take like 20 minutes oh Nope, there it went. Okay. Uh, so let's go into our temp directory. Um, are you going to open it? Is it going to open? <laughs> oh, there it went. There it went. There it went. I was looking at something else. Extract. Actually, uh, we need to go. I want to go up one. Let's 
extract these guys to or land. Man, the other crazy thing, it's amazing how much better keyboards have gotten. Like, this keyboard used to go actually be quite an expensive keyboard. Um, it was a surplus from the computer lab at, in high school, actually, believe it or not. Um, and I looked them up at the time, and at the time they were going for like two and three hundred dollars back then. So I don't know what they're going for now. They might be less, they might be more, but um, it's kind of amazing how much better this this is versus that. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how far we've come. But I bet someone somewhere would still pay quite a bit for this old wise keyboard. So. And the other nice thing about it is it's got like a port in the side of it for the mouse PS2 cable to come out of so that your you only got one cable going to the computer. So it's pretty slick, actually. I mean, I guess my keyboard has USB ports on the back of it to do something similar now, but I my previous keyboard didn't have that. There was a while there where that was kind of uncommon, I think, but. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to monitor performance on these old machines. Um, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Is there, um, <laughs> what do we got? Tech Republic here. System monitor? System monitor. Okay. This is task managers. Maintenance wizard, scan disk, where was it? Accessories, system tools. Am I blind? I don't see system monitor. System information is not the same thing. Drive converter, yeah, no, there, that doesn't exist here. Hmm. You know what? I don't see... Where's Minesweeper even? Is this pre... No. Minesweeper was on Windows 98. I feel like. And I'm missing the games. I wonder where the games are. I think I'm missing some stuff here. I might have to figure out where to where to get that, how to install that. I bet it's like an additional feature or something you can install off of that. Um, I bet there's a way to do it in the control panel. Um, oh, settings, control panel. This is so simple, so much simpler than what we have now. <laughs> what do we got here? Ooh, okay, so what do we want? Oh, yes, 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 yes. We want extra desktop themes. That's for sure. 
System tools, web TV for Windows. Where multimedia details. It's in here. Sound scheme, sample sounds. Okay. Do, do, do. System tools, details. Oh, what do we got here? Yeah, I'll take a backup character map, sure. Compression tools, yeah, give me that. I don't need group policies, I need system. Monitors your network server and connections. Net watcher, interesting. System resource monitor, yeah, 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 okay, okay. Um, and then, so really, where is the games? Where are, good old briefcase, wallpapers, games, there we go. Mouse painters, let's quick view. Previews a document without opening it. Yeah, we probably want that. Word pad, scripting hosts, okay. Uh, can I hit apply? It's gonna sit, it's gonna ask me for the disc. Yeah, okay. I have that disc. And by the way, no, I did not pirate it. I have a copy with the COA. Getting started for Windows 98. And the original disc. I don't think this one is the one that came with the computer, but it's an original scratched up from when I was a kid. have inserted the disc. Okay. Got to get got to get Minesweeper and Solitaire on here. We got to have the full experience. <laughs> Okay. Oh no. There's gonna be a lot of this. <laughs> okay. Sure, we will be good upstanding citizens and we will restart our computer so we don't wreck our install. System X. And like I said, we miss out on the entire that that boot screen is completely missed out on. We don't get to see it. It's kind of sad. Someday I'll figure out what we need to do. I I have a sinking feeling I need to buy a different scaler in order for us to see this stuff. And I've got a, I've got an old DOS game I wanna to play too on stream that I played as a kid. And that's gonna require uh, the this to work, so. It's thinking. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there we go. We're back in. You know, as fast as PCs have gotten, I am amazed at how fast this thing runs and how good this thing runs. I haven't loaded it up with a bunch of software yet. We're, we'll get there, but um, let's see, what do we got now? Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Solitaire, free cell, Minesweeper. Yeah, okay. about right <laughs> okay um we've got that uh which is incredibly important for later um system monitor yes kernel processor usage what do we got here kernel processor usage Ooh, what do we got here line charts View options chart. Oh, okay. What other edit? Uh, add disk cache buffers kernel memory manager. Allocated memory. That looks important. Woo! Look, we're using a whole 87 meg. That's insane. <laughs> um, let's see here. Let's add. What else do we want to add here? Threads. Virtual machines? What is that? Um, yeah, I'm curious about current, how many threads kernel processor usage okay so we're down there okay i feel like this is gonna be something we're we're gonna need for later so i'm just gonna we're gonna leave that up for now um next up let's go back and let's let's install borland oh do you have a save option for this ah Start logging. No. Well, hopefully it saves my preferences. Hopefully that saves. We'll find out. Okay. Um, back to temp. All right. Let's run setup. Borland C++. Next. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, what's this? What is Windows LAN set up? I don't have it connected up, so we're not going to do that. Um, BC5. That sounds good to me. Database program files. Support Windows 3.1 applications. Sure, let's let's do that. Um, VDE32. Okay. We're going to need 3,000. Okay, okay, that's not too bad. All right. It's a fancy install screen. Let's <laughs> go change something real quick here. Oh, 
can't. Okay. That's fine then. Mm hmm. I wonder, I wonder what happens when you call this number now. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, oh, no, I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to call it. Oh, what what happens if we go to Borland.com? That's that's one that I'm curious about. Let's let's go try that out while we wait here. Borland. Borland is now part of Open Text. Products. Borland C. You all products. Do, do they sell it? What's an ORB? What's an ORB? High performance feature open source ORB. Nope, they don't sell it anymore, which makes sense. I mean, that thing went away long time. But I'm just amazed. <laughs> they acquired them in 2009. And then Open Text acquired them this last year, it's 2024, Ben. Um, interesting. Interesting. Oh, things are happening. Things are happening. Um, Readme TXT contains important information, which is not covered by printed documentation. You can now view the Readme file now or at a later time by viewing it in Notepad. Okay. Uh, we will. Uh, no, let's let's go take a look at the README. What do we got? New ID features. Thirty-two bit compile. Ah, thirty-two bit compiler. Fancy. Um, make the following failed build. New compiler options. Read only files identified by by an R after the file name. Modified files include an asterisk. Search replace includes change all option. So these are, this is more like a change log than a readme. Shutting down computer now saves an open.ide file. Okay. Incremental linker. Oh, is this is this incremental? Oh, this is the linking process is incremental rather than just the compiler being incremental. Interesting. Uh, make files. You can add .mak as nodes for your BCW projects. Okay. Um. Yada yada yada. Thirty-two bit compiler rule function with this prototype falling can be used it to be acceptable however you must now change the call to funk my class const and okay 
All right. Okay. I and I don't know C++ that well, so this will be very interesting. I, I think it'll be quite interesting. So update the path statement and registry. The lines files 40 is your, in your config.sys file. Let's go, we'll, we'll go double check that. Open. Big dot sys that one open. What does it need? Files equals forty. Okay. Uh, we cannot do online registration. That won't work. All right, okay. I think we need to do one two-way object modeling and code generation. Visual development with the power of C++. Live data-driven web applications. That sounds insanely cool. Okay. Um, let's uh we'll do maybe we'll do the demo the together this we'll we'll take a look at these before we get started first i am going to do yet another reboot um after installing that just so i don't wreck this thing it's gonna take take a little bit again um so since I don't know C++ that well, let's go look at what a, let's go look at what a, like a modern C++ Hello World is. Like what you would expect to find. Um, so let's, I'm pretty, I've, I've seen this many times, but um, C++, ah, different keyboard. C++ Hello World. <laughs> okay simple well sort of simple c++ strings are fun um simple we'll, we'll give that a shot we'll see what that does how that works so um borland c++ refer library reference i think we need that cross compile contains Ooh, it's a pdf yeah i think this is what we're gonna need is it link nope nope it's not linkable we're going to be scrolling unless we find something a little more searchable. Um, oh, I could just buy the book. That's neat. 60 bucks. 1992. Okay. Um... Yeah, version two is in the Internet Archive. <laughs> Do we have Orland Object Windows? Version four, I, th I don't remember what version we, we have. I think it's 5.2. I think it's the latest one, so maybe version four would be helpful for us. Um, I'm gonna download this. We we may want this. 
This is a DOS reference. But I imagine some things. Targeted 16-bit applications, targeted run into DOS. So I've got the one that can target 32-bit. Okay. We're gonna duplicate that tab and we're gonna go back. Four, four, nobody's got five to two. Turbo C. See, there's all sorts of different, like there was like window C, like object C, like what, what does that all even mean? Um, this should at least get me partially the way there. Oh, we got heap diagrams in here. Look at this. This tells us what the the memory management segmentation looks like. Dang. Free space, heap, stack, far heap. Heap and far heap. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know what an S file is. Large model memory segmentation. Still hasn't rebooted yet, by the way. Hopefully it's uh hopefully it's alright. Vroom. What's a vroom? Overlays are used in DOS programs. Overlays are part of a program's code that share a common memory area. Only parts of the program that are required for a given function reside in memory at the same time. See, we're gonna be like leaking memory all over the place. This is gonna be great. We're gonna have to like reboot to clear out our RAM. This is going to be good. Ooh, some assembly. But I imagine the assembly for old x86 is probably going to be, and, and like 16-bit, um, is going to be simpler to understand than modern assembly. I bet. <laughs> like how this doesn't even like have like a getting started. It's just like, here you go. Here's everything. Just dump complex types on you. Video functions. This is like DOS only stuff. How about, uh, uh, 5.2 reference annotations table of contents Interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I think we may have crashed on boot up, which isn't good. It's not good at all. Um, if that indeed is what happened, I have a second cap, like scaler that we can try to get the video output of what's going on here. Um, if it was config.sys that died, that caused that to die, like the addition of files 40 to config.sys, we might have to 
boot into DOS, which isn't going to work on stream. Um, we might have to go grab an extra monitor in order to fix that, which I do have. And then figure out what to unplug without unplugging all of this. Um, I think I... How do I want to approach this? Mm. Let's try that other scaler first. We'll see what happens. So, trying, trying the second scaler. One sec. Nothing. Hmm. Oh, we can we can try a reboot. See what happens. I switch back to the other scaler because at least it outputs something rather than just a black screen. This one, this one supports more modes, but doesn't display things as nicely, so. Let's try the reboot. It might boot up in safe mode. I, actually, that's that's a brilliant idea. Um, safe mode, safe mode, safe mode. So I can go in and edit config.sys. Um, what is that key? Let's, let's go look that up. Windows 98 safe mode key. Safe mode. F8. Press and hold the F8 key. F8 should be safe mode. If this doesn't boot up. I Sometimes it boots right up the second time. Sometimes it just needs two tries. Um... We'll see though. I do know that you can see something on the screen when it's in safe mode. So, we'll see. Isn't that crazy? NVIDIA broadcast, my whole mic is right, right here and it just hides it from you. It's weird. Okay. We booted up this time. Okay. I don't know what was on the screen before. So, but we booted up now. So, okay. Let's, uh, let's get down to business here then. Turbo Debugger for Win32, Windows, Turbo Profiler, Winspector, Winspector, I like that. Um, 
Ooh, yeah. DOS reference. Olay 2. Oh, database. We could do database things. That might be fun. Windows API reference. Okay. Win32 reference. Windows developer guide. Um, programmer's guide. That sounds like what we want. Okay. So we're also, I'm going to fire up the thing. So let's, uh, okay. You know what? I, I feel, I feel like we need a better. Do we want forest? No, 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 no that doesn't look good. Clouds. Oh, clouds kind of looks nice. Golden weave, metal links. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of partial to to metal links. Oh, that doesn't look too bad, but it's all brown. Red bricks. Hmm. <laughs> I knew there was more. It's stitches. Oh, it's like. Yeah. All right. Okay. I like triangles. We'll go with triangles right now. Okay. So. We've got. Uh, so tabs aren't a thing yet. Cool. Um, windows within windows are the thing. Um, okay. So, based on, like, what the expected, uh, hello world is. So, uh, we would expect... We would expect to be able to type, uh, whoa. Include IO stream... Uh, int main uh, c uh, std scout hello world return zero ah nope ah I'm used to vim motion so I'm like I'm gonna struggle here a, just just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna. Uh, what's run in here? Is it the lightning bolt? Lightning bolt looks right. Make failed. STD is not a class or namespace. Okay, 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 okay. Um. Hmm. Okay, the preprocessor, lexical elements, tokens. No, I don't. Want Language structure. I need like the standard library. Inline assembler, easy win. Preprocessor exception handling index. We we need um count. print built in functions. What do we got here? Print print takes in any string. Interesting. So if I were to You said it's a thing here. Huh? What do you mean? 
What do you mean it's not a thing? What do you mean? Oh. What is... Is this like F5? Is F5 run? No, F5 starts debugging. Okay. Make failed. Undefined symbol print. Okay. Oh, this is on the script page. This isn't... Hmm, okay. Let's, um... Why don't we consult the internet, shall we? Uh... <laughs> this looks pretty similar to what we had. Oh, we can try the normal C way. We can see what that does. Um, so instead of this, it's so weird, it lets me select out there. Uh, this is painful. No Vim motions. I don't, I don't want a breakpoint here. Can I remove that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Print F. Hello world. And then our semicolon. Let's see what this does. Uh, I think it ran. I think it ran. So, is there no, I wonder if there's no C out in Boylan C++. I wonder if that's not part of the standard life if it doesn't have a standard library but i i feel like that should have been part of c plus plus by now um we can kind of continue we can continue going through here maybe we maybe they have an explanation you're trying to compile vcl application when your hello program is console application Um, I don't feel like that's the case. I don't feel like that's, that's a good, I don't feel like that's the reason. We want to C plus plus wait for key press. Wait for user input. Get ch conio.h. We'll see if conio.h exists. This is going to be the hardest part. Is the libraries are different. Um. So here we need to say get ch. Um, include con io dot h. Let's try that. Let's try that. Ooh, look at that. And I press a key and it exits. Ooh, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. This is, this is promising. This is what we want to see. This is progress. Okay. What from here? <coughs> what from here? As I die. What do we want to do from here? So.
so hmm so so now we've we've established that this works um, we're gonna save our great code here we're going to uh, we're gonna save this in in a um, new folder source and then we'll say a new folder um, and we'll call this um, hello world and we'll call this hello cpp save okay so step one of of this hello world is a success we can com com compile we can compile it and then we can get a hello exe the i bet um uh, whoa, 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 whoa no 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 so let's do that and then when we can come over here my documents source oh it puts the bin file it puts the exe in the in a bin folder that's interesting so it kicks out i wonder if you can configure that So is this completely linked? Can I just take it somewhere else? Can I drop it right here and then run it? Yeah, and that works. Okay, so this is a completely linked, completely independent file. Okay. So that bin folder is gonna get super messy. Um, project open project file how do you create a new project new target so how do you is there a way for us to printer set up <laughs> Oh, so you could print your source code out on paper. That's crazy. Um, new project. We'll just say this is um, hello world ID. Easy win. I wonder what that is. Um, Win32 console. It's a Win32 console project. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we get our project tree. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. And then all that code we, we just wrote in the other thing. Um, um, file save all that actually okay oh control a does not work control c control v okay <laughs> at least we can copy and paste at least uh no we don't want to save uh file save all and then execute make failed oh what's what's in here what's supposed to be in here 
save it all. It's the dot def file. Um, and then the RC, I think RC sounds like, um, like configuration, but what's a def? What's the def file? I have questions. I have questions. Uh. Hmm. C plus plus death file. What are these? Do we have to define, do we have to define using the def file? Do we have to define, ah, on keyboard. Um, do we have to say int main, do we have to define that? Keyword int. Weird, so it doesn't need anything in it, but it needs to exist. Okay, um, that makes sense. But when I hit save all, it didn't actually save the def file, which is strange. Very, very strange. Okay, so we're going to close this for now. We're gonna, we're gonna, so that's how, that's how to create a project. Uh, and then we're gonna delete this guy. We don't need him anymore. Cause we got this guy. Okay. And close this. Um, so now what do we, what do we got here? So, think we need to go to the if we want the tour of the thing we need to go to the setup files we'll give that a go back to this okay uh okay Okay. Okay. PVCS, seamless version control system. I was I was actually thinking about trying to get like a version of Git on this thing in order to to do version control, but 
they've got their own version control system apparently so that's that's interesting install shield that's good uh, for Java run app accelerator for Java run Java code 5 to 15 times faster I'll believe it when I see it uh, together two-way guided object modeling and code generation visual low code it was a thing it's been a thing low code no code right here yep yep uh, together C++ Borland code guard is install so design develop debug deploy okay uh, not as many this is like a executive like this is what I'd imagine when you're selling to an executive in a company you'd show this as a presentation like that's that's what this looks like I thought we were gonna get some code I thought we were gonna get some like tutorial stuff going on here and yeah integration demo integration together C++ makes it easy to use old with C++ Code, C-O-A-D, object model. Interesting. Like code generation stuff. I guess they said, that's what they said. generates class diagrams for you wow well I think Visual Studio does that I think you can do that in Visual Studio today hmm. do we have this one create objects of your application This is intense. Imagine if you bought into this and then like 10 years down the road, you needed to edit this in a visual editor and you had the same code base you'd had for, for the last 10 years. And you did all this work in the visual editor and then all of a sudden you couldn't access the visual editor anymore. You couldn't regenerate the code you had to you had these like massive files that you had to just go by hand and I bet it does a terrible job at writing the files like I just I can't believe that this is gonna do a good job writing the files like I just I, I just find that hard to believe I, this is neat like it's a cool idea but well sort of I mean if you're if you just want to write code rather than like see things in this format then oh you can just add your this is a precursor to like wind forms almost this is the vibe I get I don't know. This laid the groundwork for some of that, I feel like. 
source code is available at any time. Edit header. Get the person ID vector. Interesting. It does look like UML, doesn't it? I, I was thinking that same thing. It's like, this looks like UML diagrams from, from college. It's crazy. Notation demo. Flexibility. <laughs> um, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. I, I want to install OG Vim on this thing and then get that because because right now like when I was making that hello world I was I was just in like regular whatever you want to call it vanilla text editing and it was painful this is crazy there's echoes of this in Visual Studio to this day like like this idea of like visually seeing code it like it's it's partially still in there you I, I've generated diagrams like this before in in VS crazy crazy reverse engineering demo oh oh they've got a decompile sort of a existing applications Blazer, Blazer, like C sharp Blazer. <laughs> the original, the OG Blazer. <laughs> it's been around that long. <laughs> it's not a new project. No, it's a different. This is an ER, that's O R. <laughs> I doubt they were doing WebAssembly in the browser back then, you know. Yeah, you know, it's just, I just do. Synchronization of source code and object model, built in documentation generation, customizable documentation, object assisted analysis and design. Okay, this is more of that, that visual UML style code stuff. Uh,. Source code and object model are always in sync. Interesting. Okay. Mm, documentation and help files. That's that's pretty cool that you can generate the Windows help files and the RTF files right from your code. That's that's kind of neat. I like that. And HTML files. Uh marketing we got here faster easier development using proven technologies <laughs> more marketing okay all right um ode ode is that what they call that stuff i don't know what they Oh, okay. Object oriented analysis and design. Okay. So, so the, all that UML stuff, it's called ODE. And then they had like, they were clever. They called it C O A D for like the code portion. <laughs> so, interesting. Interesting. All right. Um, okay. So now I want to now I want to I want to pop up an actual window. That's my that's my next goal. So we did hello world. Hello world worked. Um now I want I want I want to try to get a window built out. So let's try that. So so I imagine we need to go to the um, we need the Windows Developers Guide. 
I would think. Um. So Windows.h, strict type checking, installing, approving, messages, porting code, the generic, Win32 based application. Section, introduce source code components of a generic Win32 application named generic. Closely remember the counterpart. Okay, this, this, this sounds, this sounds useful. This sounds interesting. We're gonna, I, I wanna follow along to this. This, this seems about right. So, so let's, let's see. So let's go describe here, consists of the following parts, the menu, window property. Okay, the entry point function. Okay, so Win32 application must have an entry point function. The name commonly given to the entry point is Win main. Most Win32 applications, Win main function, the generic application completes the following steps, registering the window class, creating the main window, entering the message loop. Okay. Um, so we, we can go int win api win main. We're, we're a little cramped here. That's not bad. There we go. Uh, called by the system. We got command handle the current instance, handle the previous instance as initial entry point for the Win32 base application. So this is just going to be in our program. H instance, the instance of the application, previous instance, previous instance. For Win32, this parameter is always null. If you need to detect whether or not it all already exists. Oh no, mutex is already. Ah, uh, concurrency. Oh boy, this is gonna be. This is this is gonna get. This is getting real here. I'm gonna get out of my depth real quick. It'll be fine though. I don't care if I leak memory, get thread deadlocks. We'll have fun either way. Um. Okay, so. So this is win main, the reference for win main. Um, I'm gonna go back. Registering the window class. Okay, so I expected to see like an example here. Um, okay, well let's let's do our best here to previous instance in the application current instance okay I have no idea what I'm doing but we're gonna try anyway okay so let's fire this up uh, we want to close our, our old project here so let's let's get a uh, let's get a new project going um, this this is not hello world anymore. Let's, we want to, so we're gonna create a new folder here. This is win hello. Okay, file name, we're gonna call it win hello .id. Uh, Target name, win hello. Application, dynamic. This is a Win32 application. Target model is GUI. Uh, dynamic, sure. I don't know what these are. So we'll just leave them as default. Multi-threaded, no, we'll just do single-threaded just to, just to start. Okay. So let's go look at, okay, it gave us, so, so, gave us nothing, that's neat. Um, and then we also have nothing in here. So this one, okay, so that's saved. And the RC file didn't seem to matter, okay. 
Uh, you've accidentally used the dummy version of Almain. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, maybe I'm just not. I I just didn't write code, and I didn't realize it would just compile when I clicked that button. Maybe 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 you should think about that. Um. You know. I I just. I have a feeling maybe maybe you shouldn't run code like that. Let's get our oh, this window management is just just brutal. I do not miss this. Uh how did they get anything done? Oh without window snapping. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, so the way this goes, so int win API win main. So we have um, H instance. Okay. And because I, I'm a masochist, each instance, each prev instance. Oh, I forgot a comma. It's a comma here. And then for the end. Uh, L L P S T R L P C M D line. Int C M D show. Okay. Um, <laughs> will this run? It's so so. Return. I don't even know what to return. Like I don't know what Win API is. What what is Win API? Like what what is that type? The function succeeds terminating it when receiving a quit message. It should return the exit value contained in that message's W parameter. Function terminates before entering the message loop. It should return zero. Okay, so we'll just return zero for now. Let's just see if this works let's see if this compiles i doubt it because i think there's some header files i'm supposed to be referencing that i don't know yep uh declaration syntax error wait what it's the syntax error uh so in here where this doesn't say header file winbase.h okay so maybe i need to in here um include winbase.h maybe maybe that's make failed preprocessor include include this is the land before LSPs. Um, Winbase H type names expected declaration missing. Oh, I can't compile. I can't compile the part of the library. Why not? Why can't I compile part of the part of the library? <laughs> uh, that is the type name. What do you mean? That's a type name that already exists here.
Did it just open a bunch of those? No, it's opening in the same one. It's smart enough. It's smart enough. Okay. So how are we supposed to, how are we supposed to use, why, why is it upset? Why is it upset? That's what I, we need to know. Why is it not compiling the header file that I'm telling it to include? What is the reason? Normally, I would look it up on Stack Overflow and I would copy and paste the answer. We'd all be happy. Everything would be great, right? But we're living in the 90s here. So we need to struggle a little bit. At least that's what everyone thought before Google. Um, win base so import library none unicode no platform notes none group following functions are used to create and manage windows Okay, there's all sorts of stuff. Obsolete functions. Okay, no, no, no. We don't want anything obsolete. Create window. See this document? This makes sense. Um, let's. Can we find an example? That's that's what. I would like to find like an example windows win 32 example borland c plus plus win 32 command line tools uh yeah 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 a simple window include windows.h oh maybe let's let's try that let's try um so instead of i don't think this matters per se i don't think this matters um i don't think that matters in the least No, it doesn't matter. Um, Windows site. What is that? Whoa. Oh, okay. Did it, it compile? Did it run? Did we? Okay, okay, okay. We're running. Sweet. Okay. Um. Okay. So, let's go back to that example then. What do we got here? Win main. Oh, here's our win main. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we've got the class X WC MSG. So we're declaring a bunch of memory here, a bunch of different things. Create window, create the window. And then window creation failed. Oh, this is, this is what to do if there's an error. And then we show window, and then we update window. And then while, so so we, we have this loop. 
and then okay so okay so i need to do a crap ton of typing and we need to get this i'm gonna try to get this as is in here to start we'll see how this goes we'll see if we can get a window to show up so i don't have copy and paste between these machines so this will be fun um capture okay so what we need to do so first this says we need to w n d class x w c uh h w n d how wind m s g something for message why one is uppercase and the other two are lowercase i do not know um so we're gonna say register the window class okay wc dot cd size equals size of w wnd class ex okay wc dot style equals zero wc dot lp um and i'm just gonna so i'm gonna aha using the wrong let's text search interesting okay make failed toggle breakpoint um oh we're gonna get rid of that breakpoint what's the problem here uh message declared oh, okay these are warnings Oh, the first thing, undefined symbol, WND proc. Where was win proc? LFP. Where, oh, 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 oh. So, so I bet, so that's actually a function that's higher up in the other window. See, so we need to declare that. Um, let's do that. Ah, too many mice. Const. Okay, let's do this variable declaration first. <coughs> G. S Z. Class. Name. Mouse, why are you? No, stop popping up. Why are you? Why? I'm not clicking on you. Why are you changing DPI? Um, okay, so we do that equals my window class. Okay. Uh, L result callback WND proc. That's WND proc. H wind U int MSG W param W param L param L param. Okay. You know what, we'll go based on their convention. Uh, switch. G. Case. Destroy window. Okay. Uh, I like putting my brakes there, not on the same line. Case. 
I do get why they, they like to do that. Post quit message. So this is for quitting gracefully, I assume. Default. Okay. Okay. We want to delete that. So that looks. Oh, oh, and then there's a return zero right here. Okay. So we've established that. Um, so now this should compile. Now this should compile. And it does. Doesn't do anything, but it compiles and links just fine. Sweet. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. And then we need to continue here. So. Uh, WC. What is this? WC dot LFPN win process C B C L S extra. This is all so this is all just setting black magic. C B uh, wind extra. I would be curious to see what building things in Windows natively in C looks like these days. If does it look like this still? I mean, I mean, sh I'm sure there's some stuff that's deprecated. Uh, H instance WC dot H icon load icon null IDI application cursor. Uh, not that cur. It's H cursor. Uh, load cursor null. ID C arrow. C H B R background. Doing some casting. Color window. Plus one L P S C menu class name G S C class name. H icon SM load icon null null okay and then so if not register class EX reference to WC mess message box null window registration failed flailed that's more, that's better error mv icon exclamation um bit masked with mv okay Interesting. Uh, return zero. 
which is odd to me because isn't that a failure state wouldn't you want to return something else but whatever h a wind create window oh no 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 create window ex ws ex client edge we can't get away from microsoft edge it was present at the beginning gsc class name the title of my window ws overlapped window uh cw use default cw use default 240 and 120 null null each instance null okay all righty if a wind a wind equal null ah i need vim motions i need vim motions uh So much error handling. Message box. No. Window creation failed. Error. Icon X. Claimation. MB. Okay. Uh, show. Do the actual showing of the window. Show that window. Each wind. Wind. I see a typo. Wind. Uh, wind. And command. Show. They really didn't like descriptive variable names back then did they c plus plus is probably that same way now update window wind uh while get massage uh musk null zero zero No, no, no. Translate message. Dispatch. This is the main loop. It's like the game loop. Turn message W. Uh, ramp. Okay, look at that. Look at that. All right. Uh, make failed. Haha. -ha. IDI application not found. That's because I misspelled it. App application. Okay. Uh, icon exclamation MB. What did I misspell? MB. Where is it? Where is it? 
I can't X call X call EX. Oh, okay. I can't. So it's EX C L. Um, exclamation. Guarantee I did the same misspelling down here then. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even put in the underscore. There we go. Let's try that. Make still failed. Call to undefined function dispat. Dispath. Dispatch. 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 Hey, look at that. Look at that. We have a window. <laughs> Looky, looky there. Okay, okay. That's a start. That's a start. I'm gonna change some stuff around here. So, um, so let's overlap. Let's just overlap this just just a little bit because we're we're all in one file right now. We don't need any of that stuff. So, title of my window, I just want this to be my awesome program. I'm, I'm a noob, I just, I just want to see things change. It's going to make me happy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It did. Look at that. It works. Um, okay, so what, what next? Um, the menu bar, the menu bar is what's next. Um, we need, we need like file menu and stuff. Like if we're going to be a legitimate function here. So we registered the, the, and we created the main window. Let's, let's go do some researching. Uh, Let's just do some cursory reading so we get some context here. Window class defines the attribute of windows, such as style, icon, cursor, name of the menu, name of the window procedure. O N C S O N D C C S V Red Draw C S H Redraw. It's interesting. Generic app class, window proc, main window proc, menu, menu name, generic app menu, CS extra, and then we register the class. See the menu. Um, oh, you can annotate the Win32 help. Um, we're gonna come back to the menu, I think. Turn the message loop. Okay, 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 okay. Creating the main window. So then we create the window. You can create the window by calling the create window function. Generic application creates the window as follows. First param is the name of the class we registered. Reigning parameters will specify other window attributes but the window does not display a window until the application calls the show window function. The generic application displays a window as follows. Show window, a wind, in command, show. Okay. Um, all right. And then we enter the message loop. This is the game loop here, the, the main loop. Once the window is created, displayed, the win main function can be its primary task, which is to read messages from the application queue and dispatch them to the appropriate window. Windows does not send input directly into the app an application. Instead, it places all the message keyboard input from the user 
into a message queue, like, like RabbitMQ? Along with messages posted by Windows and other application. The application must read the message queue, retrieve the messages, and dispatch them so the window procedure can process them. The generic application uses the following message loop. This is verbatim what we have. Okay. Retrieves the message from the queue. The dispatch message sends each message to the appropriate window procedure. The translate message function translates virtual key message into character message. In the generic, in generic, this is necessary to implement menu access keys. Okay. So we got some manual handling that has to happen for menu keys. I assume that's like the alt F stuff. I assume we have to do that ourselves is what it's saying. Let's let's step back a little bit and let's go look at the menu itself. This is what I want to do next. So most applications include a menu to provide means to use or select commands. Most common way to create the menu is to define it as a resource in the resource definition guide. The generic application has a single menu named help with a single command about. Um, the resource is defined as follows. Okay. Wait, is this saying, is this saying that there's a generic, like there's an example? in the Borland no 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 uh examples examples oh windows uh well hello make file readme simple windows program written in C++ There's the, oh, there's that beautiful icon. Did this just open that? Yeah, 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 it did. So what do we got here? It's a main class. They've got a window class. Oh, they're doing all sorts of object-oriented stuff. Menu name, so this doesn't have a menu. What happens when we execute this? No, 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 no. I want to execute this one. Nope, we can only execute my awesome program right now. Ooh, this is doing... Look at that terrible formatting. Somebody missed his face. Get pointer, set pointer. This white on, this black on white text is really messing with my eyes. I'm blind. And my vim on black background. Far. Pascal? Pascal? What? How are we writing C++? Not Pascal. So this is painting a rectangle onto the screen. This is doing like direct drawing to the window. Line funk data. And then it I bet it passes a reference to something. No? Well, how? Is this setting some sort of internal state? What is this doing? I just want to know how to make a menu. 
This does not have a menu in it, though. That was fairly, that was made fairly clear um, by the null in there. Uh, VB dialog. It's visual basic dialog. Help X sounder true type drag drop DLL info. See how? See how? Oh, okay, 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 okay. background menu name make make int resource c help c help ap menu c help ap menu oh, we're using windows and windows x both strict hdr stop interesting c help M C helper. Yeah, okay. okay. That's just our main loop here. This is doing our window stuff. So it doesn't look like there's anything like crazy as far as like additional things. What's well, context sensitive help for menu choices to use the application in F1 when a menu item is highlighted. Okay. creates a resource for the menu and then it has to handle all these switch conditions where does it define load accelerators that sounds exciting I don't know if I'm going to get the menu right now, but what I should probably do before we end tonight, I should probably, um, I should probably do, try to get Vim installed and maybe working just a little bit. Uh, we have a compiler, um, so now we need a Vim. Yes, please save the file. Okay. All right. So now I had in the C drive, my C drive here, I have a uh, front log. I don't know what that is. Program file. No, 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 no. Temp. The temp folder, the dumping ground. Uh, Orlin C++. No, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. Or was it? It's on the, it's on the other CD. Okay, let's try 
Let's try GVIM first. I don't think GVIM is going to work. Okay. Um, let's do, do the VIM then. Regular VIM. Program 7 zip. We want to extract that to somewhere else. C program files. Let's see program files is where we'll we'll dump the Vim stuff to. It's taking its time. That Vim. Oh, it's because it's on a disc. It's on. It's because it's on a CD. It's got to copy off the CD into the memory. I should have copied off the CD first. I didn't think about it. Oh well. We'll just have to wait. We'll just have to wait. How's everybody watching doing? Taking forever. Yeah, I want to cancel. Let's cancel. Can I not even? I can't even. Can't even cancel. So because I'm impatient, the CD drive's not even doing anything. What are we hung up on here? Why? Why are we completely? locked up here this doesn't make any sense what what <laughs> I just want vim <laughs> I just want vim I want to stop using the weird Borland thing I want to use vim Can't. Yes. Can't. I think I have to. Yep. We're killing. We're killing seven zip. We're doing it. We're trying. Oh. Uh oh. I may have screwed up. <laughs> uh oh. Uh. Completely locked up. That's a hard lock. Caps lock won't work. We're done. <laughs> I 
New goal for the night. Unzip them. <laughs> That's all I want. Just, just unzip for me. <laughs> oh. Don't miss this part. I knew this was going to be a thing. Hard locks and. Oh, and I'm sure we're going to corrupt the OS at some point. I'm going to need to reinstall. <laughs> so. Somebody said, um, somebody posted and said it feels like home, um, uh, and a screenshot of the, the stream on Twitter, and it was like, yeah, it does, it does feel like home. So even, even this part, the reboots and stuff, it just, it does. maybe it'll come back we might have to go boot into safe mode just to just to figure out what what happened here it may also be attempting to boot off of the cd but there's no bootloader on that cd so it shouldn't be trying to do that man i've booted booted it with that cd before it hasn't been a problem Ooh, yeah. There we go. Here we go. It's probably that check disk stuff that runs. I can't I can't see it, so I don't know, but All right. Let's see here. What can we unzip Vim? Hello, Mr. Old Player. So, we're not going to make that same mistake again. We're going to copy, copy off the drive before we start to unzip it, because apparently you can't do both. And it copied super fast. Okay, so let's get 7-zip going here. Let's see if we can unzip it now. Extract. I want to go to program files. Oh, it, it did unzip some stuff. Yeah, we're going to overwrite that entire thing. Okay. Okay. So now, now... When we go to where is it? Where is it? System MS DOS. Am I blind? Oh, MS DOS prompt. Okay. CD. That's going to get me. I'm going to have to create a CMD file uh, or a, a batch file that just aliases LS for me. It's going to have to happen. Uh, pro, uh, pro, pro, grand one. Vim. Almost did it again. I didn't do it. Vim. 73 autocomplete is also not a thing in Windows 98 apparently. Vim.exe. Oh, look at that. 
it works. <laughs> oh. It's making beep. I don't. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's beeping at me. Um. So, so. What do we got in here? Um, let's just do Vim tests. Oh, what's install? Let's, let's do install. I didn't realize that there was a and notepad read me one. Uh, general information, DOS or installation instructions, one time Vim. Several distributions. Okay. Um, what does install do? File type dot vim. You must unpack the runtime archive vim seven three rt dot zip. before installing so <laughs> 10 out of 10 huh um <laughs> oh by the way thank you for following mr old player and thank you for following Ilya. i didn't um i didn't say that before so thank you guys for following um vim 73 rt so so here's the thing do i have ah went to the wrong place so the file 46d32 so we need that runtime file i guess before we can start doing anything so what we can do i figured this would be a thing so what we can do so vim so we need a very specific Need the right keyboard. Um, vim seven three seven three rt dot zip. Oh, the <laughs> uh. Oh, okay. That was strange. Uh, oh. Vim seven three RT dot zip. There we go. There's a runtime file. Eight megabytes, and it's taking its time. Well, it does that. I gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Be good, and we actually have to. You can't see it because I'm in the way. I actually have to unplug and eject. Uh, so we need to stop the USB drive. Can now be safely removed from the system. Okay. Dropped it on the floor. Um. <laughs> Let's 
go back to let's do screen area um so there's our zip file oh it's not it's not downloaded yet that's really slow 17 kb a second that's insanely slow Two minutes and 50 seconds left. Too slow. Too slow. Oh, you can't even see it. Oh, Firefox doesn't show the... is real real slow <laughs> it's brutal i don't i don't understand i mean i is there an alternate download here that we can do uh Is this a mirror? Does Princeton have a mirror? Bim 7.3 RT. Oh, there's this flying. There we go. No, cancel that. <laughs> It's still really slow. This should be way faster, but it's better. It's at least a little better. Hurry up. was going faster I feel like and then it slowed back down well let's go let's go while we wait let's go see what this other so what this other website did I have that did I still have it oh where'd our tutorial site go did I close it Na, na, na. Did I close it? Tutorial. Yeah, there we go. Registering window class. This does all the. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. What it was all this. So the set size of the structure. Set size of the structure. Okay. Class styles. Not to be confused. These can usually be set to zero. Pointer to window procedure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That made sense. Amount of data allocated for this class in memory. Per window of this type. This is all like memory allocation stuff for the window. Cursor menu resource. Create the window. Extended the window style given the sunken inner border around the window. Set to zero if you'd like to see the difference. Oh, I bet one's sunken and then one is like, like it's that gray just across the whole screen. Or maybe it's just white and then on the same level rather than like kind of the 3D effect they get with the borders. Um, parameter, overlapped, window. You should look them up and experiment to find out what they do. That we covered more here. Next four parameters are X, Y coordinates for the top left corner. That makes sense. 
Uh, parent window. Okay, so you can have parent child windows. Valid handle. Then we can update and ensure that it is properly redrawn itself on the screen. That's what that stuff does. And then you get into the message loop and the window procedure. And there is no step five. Okay. This is this is a really good this is a really good um, little guide here. Um what we're gonna do though, let's get back to back to this this actually downloaded so we're going to go run and we'll go drop this on the flash drive here hit the wrong alt tab because I'm not I have two keyboards there we go there we go I was using the stream preview and it's like delayed it's like why is my mouse all laggy <laughs> all right and then we go extract it Oh, nope. Wrong file. Oh, I never copied it. <laughs> Bam. That is way faster than a CD. <laughs> I think the thing that's gotten faster is storage. Not necessarily like processor snappiness. Maybe like brute force. But like latency wise, like like feeling like things are snappy, like that hasn't that hasn't changed much. Like programs launch on ninety Windows ninety eight kind of in the same, if not faster than Windows today. Like now you have to wait for them to load and stuff. It felt like it feels like they're they're a little bit faster to load now. Oh look at all that! Holy crap! Okay. Uh, we want to extract all of this. We want to we want to drop that in the same folder in the program files. Probably don't want this here, but meh. Okay, now let's try the installer. Let's see what the installer does. BC5 is is Borland my default bin path? Is that why it's doing this? Maybe that's the only thing in my path. Create startup file. Okay, yeah, so let's. Do 
empty. Uh, CD. Oh, that's awesome. Good job. It's very hard. I had to figure out how to weld it. Mm. Mm hmm. That's an issue. <laughs> Um, so my doc, you okay, so them dot. Net RW. <laughs> oh, illegal file name. Interesting. 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 So, can we go up a directory? Why? Something's wrong. <laughs> Something is very wrong. <laughs> doesn't like one of these file names um, let's just say vim oh because I wonder if it's because they're all the same name one dot cpp oh yes this this looks nicer. This looks much nicer. That tab, though. <laughs> right, we're gonna have to configure some things. That. That is a nine space tab. That's that's kind of intense. I think we could do with a four. Um, but but it works. Um, so the fun thing here is, so we don't have Tmux. Um, so I wonder what. I wonder what you would have used. Would you have like quit the command line and then like in the MS DOS days? I wonder, wonder what they did for multitasking like that. So uh, I'll have to do some research and figure it out. But we we got Vim installed. It works. It runs. Um, we need to. There's a VimRC in here. Program. I so need alias LS. Um, file name I wonder why I wonder why I wonder why
Um, so let's vim vim rc. It's in here. Behave ms wind. <laughs> interesting. Vim vim runtime. Is this set? I wonder. Messages. I did type that right. Echo Vim runtime. Did I do that right? Oh no, Vim runtime. Weird. Well, I believe don't our doesn't our stuff get set in auto exec bat now? Uh, Vim auto exec dot bat. <coughs> Yeah, so there's there's our path there. Getting set properly. So the the Vim runtime file probably isn't being set properly. Or the Vim runtime directory isn't being set properly. Um and so all the behave files are probably not right. I would guess. I would guess that's what's going on. So, um, to expect. So, vim runtime. Oh, how do you? Mm, how do you? I think it's set. Vim. Or no, I think it's Vim. Is that where that file lives? Uh, let's go look. Yeah, and for this to apply, Hmm. 
we obviously have some more configuring to do. Um, but I think I need to call it here. I think I need to, to hang this up for tonight. Um, I am going to be streaming again, at least again next week this time. Um, but probably before that, if I can find some time, um, I want to figure this out. I want to see how to, I, I want to get like a full development workflow, um, set up. So, and, and working. So this is going to be interesting. Um, I guess I'm learning, I'm going to end up learning C++ here because this is really interesting and I'm having a good time doing it. So, alrighty. Um, so we got a few viewers. Um, who, who can we, can we raid someone? Three viewers? Um, let's see here. Let's, let's see here. Who's... Who's available to raid? Twitch TV. Do, do, do. <laughs> Everyone's offline. <laughs> Who this? Interesting. Uh... When you have a history of greatness, you can ah, ads. 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 <laughs> sure. We'll send you guys their way. All right. So, uh... Let's do a raid. Start the raid. <laughs> Ready to raid in three, two, one. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Zap plus one. M. M. Psych. Zap plus one. M. M. Psych. Thank you for the raid. Hello. C plus plus is defeating me. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Not slowly, definitely surely. M. What might you have been working on? Was it C plus plus? plus plus 
Windows 98. That means that you would have to be using probably an older standard of C++. Like, gee, I don't know what the older version was. 97 or whatever it was. At the most. I... I first learned C++ um, I think it was like I think it was like Visual C6 or something something stupid old There was also a really old compiler that I was using for Macintosh called, I think it was Metroworks or something. It was a long time ago. See, I want an expression that's like how far in we are. That would be like the current iterator minus the expression. Again, why do I always put the E before the B? That's not what it means. So that should give me an offset. Sort of like a stack trace of sorts. Good night. Yes. Yep. Effective February first. So next paycheck. So it'll be the 15th when I get the bigger check. Okay. So I'll get 300 more this month instead of 600 more. <laughs> hey, I got two more Twitch followers. I got people chatting while I was doing it. Apparently, w streaming Windows 98 programming is much more interesting than what I was doing before. <laughs> I wasn't 